just to prove that iPhones were invented for you and me as writers, they come with a dictionary built in. You just can't find it because actually, although it's there, there's no built-in dictionary app the way there is on the Mac. Instead, iPhones and iPads offer two really subtly different ways of getting to the same dictionary definition. I do not know why it's two different ways to use Apple's own dictionary, but I do know why I'm also going to recommend that you use someone else's dictionary app instead. Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 Keys, a whole series that actually you should subscribe to as a writer who, like me, uses Macs and iPhones and iPads. So much for us to cover, so much for us to talk about and so many excuses for you and me to put off actually writing anything. Work with me on this one. Uh, such as the age-old argument that we can't write until we've looked up a particular word. In the olden days, like thousands and thousands of years ago, we would go to our shelves, pick up a huge book, and before we'd reached anywhere close to the word we wanted, we would have spent many, many hours reading every other word we stumbled across. It was great. Now your iPhone will just tell you the definition. Thanks. Here's how to do that though. Here's the main way to get Apple's definition. Uh, here's a website, and I don't know what the word excess means. I just hear people mentioning it. Um, press and hold on the button on the word you want. Up come the options, hit look up, and there's a definition. Uh, I'll show you why I've got two definitions in a moment, but for now, just tap on one of them and then you get this whole page, of the, including right at the bottom, not always, but usually my favorite bit, the etymology of the word, the origin of the word. Love it. Uh, tap done and you're back to this website. Look what happens though, if I want to do the same thing when it's not on a site, when I've written the word, um, if I do it in drafts, for example, uh, this time I think it's the word announce that I don't like. There's no lookup option, not in the original bit. I have to tap along here to then find it. Okay, it's otherwise the same, but let's go over to, have I got pages? I'm at pages and I think today it's the word forever that I don't know and again, it's not put it at the start, it's put it somewhere else and it's called it something else, define. Funny thing is, it depends what, it, it does change. It is sometimes in that first section of things you can tap, sometimes in the second one, and I don't know why, and I don't know why the same feature is called define in one and look up in the other. Actually, I have this image, don't you, of the people at Apple Park, uh, the pages team, the safari team, the iPhone team, having a sandwich and arm wrestling over it and the pages people will be saying but define the word is what it is actually doing and everybody else is saying yeah but how do you know that the word is defined until you've looked up the word yeah you can see that going on for a while anyway um easier to explain why I, ha I had two definitions and you might have two you might have more uh it, this is the pages one at the bottom you see this button called manage it gives a list of dictionaries and in this version uh, if you have one of these dictionaries installed, different languages, different uh, versions of languages really, then uh, there's no symbol next to it. If you've got it, there's no symbol. If you haven't, there's a download symbol. And of course, you can download the ones you want. If I wanted to add American English, for example. Except, just to prove that this is all the same thing, let's go back to that website and again, look up this. And now there's Manage Dictionaries. Tap this one. And well, it's kind of the same thing, except in this case, we've got a tick next to the ones I've got and nothing next to the ones I haven't. Not even a download button, but it's exactly the same thing. Uh, the ones you haven't got, you tap and you download them. Um, it can take a few minutes to download them because it's quite a big, chunky bit. Apple doesn't load the whole phone with all of the languages because that would use up your space, but you can elect to add or remove them. Once you've added them, they are actually on the phone. So wherever you are, even when I get really bad internet connection problems when I travel around certain parts of the UK, uh, doesn't matter, everything is still in there. It's not relying on an internet connection to look up something and that makes it ace. And actually that probably makes Apple's dictionary enough, enough for me, enough for you, enough for everybody. Yeah, not for writers. We want more and we can get some more. 
Search the App Store for dictionary and you get quite a few. Um, they tend to fall into categories and it's really hard to tell which is which. Uh, some of them are just a, a front end to an online service. They don't have any definitions in the app on the phone. You type something and they have to look it up online. I'm not keen on those because I quite often I'm traveling or something, I have poor internet reception and in that case, they simply cease to work. At the other end, some of the apps have all of the definitions right there on the phone and that's great. Others though are kind of mixtures of the two, hybrids. And the one I wish I could afford is only online and doesn't even bother to pretend to have an app. It's solely online, but it just, it doesn't quite seem as if it is. The Oxford English Dictionary, online at oed.com. Incredible. I mean, using this to look up the word excess, it's practically insulting. Instead, use the OED to learn every nuance of the history of a word, centuries of language at your fingers. It is mesmerizing. And I know because 30 years ago, I was given a press copy of the entire thing on CD-ROM for the Mac. Easily the most eye-popping thing I've ever been sent to review, except it only worked for about a year. Not from some um, subscription or licensing thing, but uh, back then as it happened, just at that point, there was a big technical change in Macs and the CD-ROM was still the CD-ROM, but the Mac app you needed to use to read the CD-ROM was not updated to work with the next Mac OS update, whatever that was. It still hasn't been. Three decades on, you still can't get your own copy of the Oxford English Dictionary to carry around with you, but you can subscribe to it online. And right now, March 2021, there's a, there's a bit of a sale on. If you subscribe before March 31st, 2021, your first year will cost you £90 or $90. Usually it's £215 or $295. Uh, it's possible your local library subscribes, especially if it's a university library. One more important thing about the Oxford English Dictionary. I said that you can't get it as an app to keep on your phone. But if you search the App Store for Oxford English Dictionary, there you go, there it is. You'll see at least these couple of them. None of them though are the OED as I've just described it. Some of them are like uh, the top bits of the OED, the, the basic definitions and maybe a bit more and perhaps that could be okay. Except there's a free one which requires an internet connection and which I'm really sorry, but I just find ugly. And it has ads here at the bottom, uh, pop-up ads. And of course you can pay to remove those. Except in, if you're doing the free version, uh, you get the free version, you buy the in-app purchase and subscribe, that costs you 20 pounds a year, the subscription. But you could instead go back to the app store and spend about 23 pounds buying what seems to be the same dictionary in the same app and definitely from the same company. Now, I'm sure there are subtle differences, but it also looks to me as if that free version, that paid one, is as ugly as the free one. Now, I, I am more than happy, more than happy to pay once or subscribe to use something that I rely on and that I like using. I'm going to delete that free uh, Oxford one because I don't like it and co consequently I don't use it. Plus, I do like using a completely different alternative. This is the one I use so often. It's on my front page. It's called terminology and it's made by a company called Agile Tortoise. It's free or there's an in-app purchase of £1.99 or $1.99. Um, it also has a dictionary built in uh, but it will also go to look up more. So with my patchy internet issues at least I've got some kind of dictionary definitions all the time. Actually let me just look up excess. There you go. Oh and excess. Now that's an American voice and actually this is an American dictionary. So as a writer in the UK, I do need to be aware of spelling and pronunciation differences, but I don't use dictionaries so much to find out how to spell something. I find it a bit hard uh, spelling out a word to look up how to spell the word. I'm just trying to spell. I use them for definitions and terminology is always at least fine for that. When you do have an internet connection though, it's much more than fine. You see these buttons at the top of the screen. Uh, let me top tap Oxford. That is uh, coming up slowly, at least approximately the same definition you get from the cut down Oxford English dictionaries I've mentioned and Wikipedia, just tap on there. It's, it's one tap away as is all sorts of things. And you have options to add others. You can choose what gets a button and what's in a list at the 
uh, another part of the app or not. So terminology has a dictionary built in. Plus it has one tap online access to other dictionaries. It has audio for pronunciations and I think it looks the best too. Terminology for Agile taught us free or one dollar, one pound ninety nine. Such a bargain. One second, I'm looking up uh, procrastination. There we go. Nice dictionary definition. And oh, uh, other resources. Wolfram Alpha. Let's see what happens in here. Of course, it's a word. Okay, and oh, look at that. First known use in English, 1548, during the European Renaissance, 473 years ago. Or well, European Renaissance, depending on your pronunciation preferences. Look, 1548, our tradition, our honourable tradition of procrastinating over writing and putting things off, it dates back 473 years. But it should probably stop now, right? Because we should go off and write something, yeah. Thank you for watching this. Uh, do subscribe if you can because there's lots more to say, including I suddenly realised dictionaries on the Mac. That's something else altogether. We'll talk about that another time. Thank you for watching this one. Take care of yourself, eh? and I'll see you soon.